what's going on? I am Greg Sussman, joined today by Jim Sonis of FanDuel to help us look at Week 13 from a DFS perspective. We're past Thanksgiving. We're on a Sunday. What's happening, Jim? I'm all good, Greg. This week is hectic because you have to just jam five days of work into three days. We're at the end of that now. We get to focus on what is a pretty interesting Week 13 main slate. I am I'm good to go. Happy Thanksgiving to you. How are you doing? I'm doing quite well as well, my friend. I'm excited for Thanksgiving. I'm excited for some football. And I'm excited to win some money. So let's begin on Sunday with the Chiefs back from there by facing off against an Oakland Raiders team that I expect them to decimate. And that's why I'm all in with you, on Patrick Mahomes and Travis Kelsey. Yeah, this is only the fourth time in the past nine main slates the Chiefs have been available to us, which is wild. Like, Patrick Mahomes is so good that we never get to use him on a main slate. So, like, chill out a little bit, Patrick. Let's use you a bit more. And I think that in spots like this, I will happily go there with Mahomes because we haven't seen this offense fully healthy basically all year. We've had a couple of games. They've had, you know, Tyree Kill healthy, Sammy Watkins healthy, Eric Fisher's been out for a while. But finally, it looks like if Hill's able to go, we could get the entire squad here at home against Oakland. And yeah, it's a repeat matchup, but I think it just makes a lot of sense to go hard at the Chiefs here. I love Travis Kelsey specifically at $7,100 because if you we had him where the Chiefs offense had been fully healthy all year long, his salary would probably be closer to around 8000 but instead, he is $7,100. So I think that's a really good number. And Kelsey has had 70 or more receiving yards in every game that Mahomes has finished except for once. So the yardage has been there. We know the touchdown upside is there, especially in this matchup. If Tyreek Hill plays, he is arguably the best wide receiver on the slate, too, at $8,300. But I think Kelsey, because he fills tight end, is really hard to get off of. We've got Patrick Mahomes at 86. I think that's a very fair number for him. So I kind of want exposure to this entire Chiefs team. I want to keep an eye on Tyree Kill because if he can't go, it does lower my expectations to the offense as a whole. But I want to go here pretty much no matter what. I think that Kelsey is a great route to do so. Stacking him up with Patrick Mahomes, yeah, it's expensive, but it's worth it given the spot and given the health of this offense as a whole right now. Finally getting a chance to use the Chiefs again. It's Kelsey and Mahomes. But as Jim mentioned, the entire Chiefs team in play this weekend, potentially if Tyree Kill and Damian Williams play. It's a question mark, but it's a really good matchup against Oakland. Let's team up Kelsey and Mahomes and win some cash on Sunday. If you want to go in a different direction with a different stack, consider going with the Eagles, Carson Wentz and Zach Ertz. The Ertz to Wentz or Wentz to Ertz connection it's back in full force, Jim. I know we got a little bit nervous towards the beginning of the season, but he's been really good as Zach Ertz the last three weeks in DFS, and this matchup against Miami doesn't really get better. Yeah, I know people are pretty down on Philadelphia right now because they've had back-to-back -back really bad games off their bye, but you have to remember the context around those games. Lane Johnson got hurt early in Week 11 and then didn't play in Week 12. Brandon Brooks uh, had some, some anxiety issues. He couldn't play in Week 12 for most of that game either. Sounds like both those guys should play. Alshon Jeffries coming back. So the Eagles team we're going to see on the football field in Week 13 is majorly different than what we saw in Week 12, and that's good for everybody in this offense including Carson Wentz, especially Carson Wentz, and Zach Ertz as well. If you look at the four-game span before uh, before Alshon Jeffrey got hurt and after Dallas Goddard's role expanded, Zach Ertz still had 23% of the team's overall targets in that time, and he had 26% of the deep targets. He has had 90 or more receiving yards in now three consecutive games even with his Eagles offense failing to function for the most part. So yeah, Ertz's salary has gone up to $6,900, but he is still worth that. He and Kelsey, I think, are really standout plays at the top end of the tight end pool, and I want to get a lot of both those guys. As far as Carson Wentz goes, given how bad things have been recently, it makes sense that his salary is $7,300, but again, things trending up from a health perspective around him. They're facing the Dolphins, who are 32nd against the pass. I still think that Carson Wentz is a good quarterback, and I think he can show that in this matchup with the Dolphins. We're getting him at a cheap salary. He hasn't had upside since Deshaun Jackson got hurt, but if he's going to show it, this is the spot to do so. So I still believe in Carson Wentz. I want to stack him with Zach Ertz. If you need to save salary, I think that Goddard is in play too at uh, $5,200, but give me Carson Wentz with his top guy, and that is Zach Ertz. As Jim mentioned very astutely, the Eagles, although people are off of them right now, there's been a lot of unfortunate circumstances surrounding them with Lane Johnson getting hurt, all of their wide receivers being down. Who hasn't been hurt or down? It's Zach Ertz. His connection with Carson Wentz stronger than ever and makes him for a fantastic play and a good stack on Sunday. 
You want to talk about teams that people are down on right now? No one's more down on any team like they are with the Los Angeles Rams getting blown out on Monday Night Football at home against the Ravens. Now, six days later, they face off against the Arizona Cardinals and another speedy quarterback in Kyler Murray. But their defense, the Cardinals, is not nearly as good as the Ravens. So, if the Cardinals put up a ton of points, the Rams should have the ability to match, which makes us want to pair Jared Goff and Cooper Cup up. Yeah, objectively, I think both Goff and Cup are overpriced, and I think that's worth considering. But at the end of the day, that also means no one's going to use them. And I think that's very attractive in what should be the fastest game on the board. You look at situation neutral pace on Football Outsiders, the Rams are fourth in pace, and the Cardinals are second. That is going to be a high-scoring affair there between these two teams, and that means both teams are going to be good. And as you mentioned, it is a good matchup for the Rams as well, which they haven't had very often this year. They have played 11 games so far, and seven of those 11 games have been against teams ranked 11th or better against the pass based on number fires metrics, and the Cardinals are not that. They're ranked 28th against the pass, which means this is a, a very good spot for the Rams. If you look at what Jared Goff has done in the three soft matchups he has had this year— He's had a bunch of passing yards. He's had good touchdown numbers as well. So I know that we're down on him. and It seems like Sean McVay may be as well. So if you don't want to attach yourself to Jared Goff, I think that Todd Gurley makes a lot of sense too at $7,400. But personally, I think that Goff does make sense. He is playing indoors. He is playing against a bad defense that doesn't get as much of a pass rush and finally has a good matchup in all three of his top wide receivers healthy. So Jared Goff, Probably not going to be very popular at all this week, despite the fact that this matchup is so good and this pace is so good. So I want to go there, even if I do view him as being overpriced relative to where he should be. I think the Cooper Cup makes sense, too. He has 26% of the team's targets in the games where all three of their top receivers have been healthy. He did drop a pass, leading to a pick on Monday night. He did fumble twice the game before that. So Cup has been a, a part of the struggles here for the Rams, but I still think it makes sense to go here. So Jared Goff, Cooper Cup, pricey but that should make them be less popular and i want to buy in when nobody else wants to you're right the prices for both players is too high but you're also right no one's going to use them and nobody wants to use them let's take advantage sure cup's tip led to an interception that was with the game being 45 6 so i think all is forgiven with cooper cup jared goff well he's been atrocious i get it nobody wants to use him either but in a fast-paced game against a defense that is susceptible to the pass I think you could win some money going the other way as people try to do something that's more common. Look at the Rams this week against Arizona. Moving on, we get to the Carolina Panthers. We get to the godly Christian McCaffrey, the presumed number one overall pick in fantasy circles next week. He's a good choice every week. And pairing him up this week with the Carolina defense makes a lot of sense in a game that we think Carolina should win handily against the Redskins. Yeah, Christian McCaffrey is really expensive this week. He is $11,000 on FanDuel. So you're going to have to pay the piper to get Christian McCaffrey. But I still think it's worth it because if you look at the other running backs on the slate, there is no Zeke. There is no Dalvin Cook. There is no Alvin Kamara, which means a drop off from Christian McCaffrey to the rest of the pack is huge, which means to me that I don't really care what his salary is. I want to try to jam him in there, and it gets a lot easier if we get Miles Sanders with no Jordan Howard again, if we get Auden Tate uh, paired with Andy Dalton. There are some cheap players out there, you know, potentially Caden Smith as well. There are cheap avenues that I sh think should allow you to afford Christian McCaffrey, and when you do so, I would love to because he's getting a ton of volume. Nobody else within him from a workload perspective. And even $11,000, he is just objectively a very good play on a slate where we should be able to afford him. The reason I want to go with Carolina here is because Washington's going to have to throw. They are pretty big underdogs there on the road. And Dwayne Haskins, I think that he's received a little bit you know, too much flack, given that he is a pretty inexperienced guy coming out of college. He's very young. He's thrust into this bad situation. People have been a bit too harsh with Dwayne Haskins, but it's still a really tough spot for him as he goes on the road and faces a very good Panthers defense. So it's a tough spot for Haskins. He's struggled so far this year. I think long-term, we shouldn't give up on Dwayne Haskins yet. But for week 13, we should be inclined to use a defense facing him. Yeah, it's expensive to use the Panthers. And yeah, it's expensive to use McCaffrey. But again, there is value on the slate. I want to use that value, get to Christian McCaffrey, get to the Panthers defense, and take advantage of what could be a game where the Panthers win going away. He's really, really expensive this week on FanDuel, and rightfully so. But the Carolina defense, they are affordable, and you want to take advantage of Dwayne Haskins and his inability to do, well, anything. Sure, you don't want to give up on him yet, and, and that's fair. I'm okay with that. But this week, let's take advantage. Let's use McCaffrey, pair him up with Carolina defense, and win some money. 
Continuing on, we move to the Jacksonville Jaguars, where nobody really is excited about Nick Foles. There's been calls to bring back Gardner Minshew. And the wide receiver that you're pairing him with, well, that's kind of interesting too here, Jim, because I wouldn't say that Chris Conley is the first or second choice of Nick Foles regularly. But you did see Chris Conley peppered with targets early and often uh, in Jacksonville's last game, and he kind of disappeared. Why Conley over Chark or over Westbrook? I think if you want floor, you should find the money to get to DJ Chark. DJ Chark is $6,900. He has been awesome. He has 23% of Foles' targets in the two games since he came back, and Chark has been productive. So if you want floor, go with DJ Chark. But you said that Chris Conley has not been his number one option. If you look at the, the targets that Foles has thrown at least 16 yards downfield, Chris Conley has been. He has seven total deep targets in these two games back, whereas DJ Chark has six. D.D. Westbrook, I'm not sure he's actually allowed to get deep targets, so he's definitely not on that map. But Chris Conley, seven deep targets. DJ Chark has six. And when you get those looks down the field from a guy with Nick in Nick Foles who does have ability as a deep ball passer, it can lead to a ceiling. We have not seen a ceiling so far from Chris Conley this year, but he has the factors you need in order to generate a ceiling. Specifically, he is a fast player who can get down the field, and Nick Foles will throw him the ball down the field as well. So I think that if you need to save money, Chris Conley is 6000 And again, this is a slate where I am desperate to find savings, and Conley gives me those at $6,000. No, he is not as safe as DJ Chark, and DJ Chark is a better player, better odds of hitting a ceiling, but... The $900 discount is pretty attractive here, and I think that Chris Conley is very much in play. The other thing at play here is that, honestly, both guys are good because the Jaguars are facing the Buccaneers, and the Buccaneers encourage you to throw against them. They are first against the rush based on number fires metrics, the 19th against the pass. So Nick Foles is going to throw. He is at home. He's in a good matchup, and I think that those deep balls should connect as long as the wind is not too high. The wind right now on Wednesday looks pretty bad, so make sure you check on that on Sunday. But if it, it calms down a bit, this Jaguars team is on play. I think that leads to Nick Foles at his salary, but also Chris Conley at his. $6,000, a pretty good salary to pay for a guy who is getting a lot of deep volume, which is exactly what I want for a mid-range wide receiver. The value is there, Jim. You made some great points when it comes to Chris Conley and his value in this offense for Jacksonville. And you're taking advantage of a really solid price for Conley here as well. Pairing up the Jags against the Bucks, it makes sense. We've been targeting Tampa Bay all season long. Well, it didn't work last week necessarily with Matt Ryan and either Julio Jones or Calvin Ridley. Hopefully this week it does with Nick Foles and Chris Conley. One final team to get to, and that is your New York Jets. Save the best for last. Everybody loves Sam Darnold coming off three straight wins and a big-time performance against Oakland, and yet you're not pairing him with one of his wide receivers. You're going Le'Veon Bell as well. Two expensive pairings here. Why are you going with Bell along with Darnold? Well, he is a wide receiver. At least he was used as one at times on Sunday, which is really attractive. You know, Le'Veon Bell split out wide on the first play of the game, got a deep target from Darnold, and made a pretty impressive catch. You know, Le'Veon... He was trying to make the case in his uh, his hearing about his about the uh, the salary cap that he was a wide receiver too. He kind of showed that on Sunday. So Le'Veon Bell, good pass catcher, and I think that does matter a lot here. And we've seen Le'Veon Bell get really good usage recently. He has 16.3 carries and five targets per game over his past four games. That's despite dealing with injuries in that time as well. He is $7,300, and against this Bengals defense, which ranks 22nd against the, pass, the rush and 30th against the pass, I think it's kind of hard to turn down Le'Veon Bell. He is in a loaded tier running back. You've got Saquon Barkley at 76, Leonard Fournette at 76, Todd Gurley at 74, but I think Le'Veon Bell is my favorite here, given that he seems healthier and given that he's playing good football and getting usage out wide as a wide receiver as well. Darnold, not that expensive. He is $7,600. I prefer him more at home than when he's on the road, and he is on the road here. But this Bengals defense is really bad. Andy Dalton playing should help this game stay a little bit closer and force the Jets to throw deeper in the game than they did this past Sunday. So I think that Darnold makes a lot of sense. And I want to go with a guy who'll throw the football. That's Le'Veon Bell. And also using these two guys together likely gets you access to most of the yards and touchdowns that the Jets do score. And they should do a pretty decent amount of that on Sunday. So it may not be the most conventional stack with Sam Darnold. I do like Robbie Anderson. James Crowder still in play too. But uh, Bell's a really good player. You think he's underpriced. And I think that he makes a lot of sense in this spot with Darnold as well. You've been looking for running backs all season long that have doubled as wide receivers. And once again, you found one here with Le'Veon Bell, pairing him with Sam Darnold, who's been good to great lately. This won't be the last time I know we talk about Sam Darnold, because next week against Miami, we'll come back to the well one more time. But for now, get Darnold and Bell in there in this great matchup against Cincinnati. 
That's going to do it for us here on the FanDuel Hurry Up. Jim, what's the plan for Thanksgiving tomorrow? I'm going to be hanging out, watching some football, sweating some DFS lineups, and eating all the green bean casserole I can possibly stomach. I'm pretty excited. What about you? I will be here helping produce some of our programming, which you can catch on Sports Grid, and then off to my dad's to enjoy a heck of a lot of food, some meatballs, and obviously some football. It's going to be a great, great weekend. Enjoy the games, everybody. Have a fantastic Thanksgiving. And Jim and I and the rest of the crew will be back next week to help you get ready for your fantasy playoffs and season long and to help you continue to win money in DFS. Have a great weekend, everybody.